In your speech at the National Defense University, you talked about partnerships, which is one of your priorities, uh, saying the Navy and Marine Corps are naturally suited to develop these relationships, particularly in the innovative small footprint ways called for by our defense strategic guidance. What are these innovative small footprint ways, and how are the Navy and Marine Corps naturally suited for them? Well, we come from the sea. Our platforms are sovereign pieces of America. We don't take up a single inch of anybody else's territory. We come from the sea, we do the things that you do to build partnerships. We do training together, we do exercises together, we do some operations together. We also do some humanitarian things uh, and disaster relief from, from these same platforms. We go in with medical, with dental, with veterinary services. And <clears throat> or we deliver supplies. You can surge equipment, you can surge people. What you cannot surge is trust. And the fact that we come from the sea, the fact that we're not looking to establish a base, the fact that we do the job that we are sent to do and then we leave, um, but that we do this over and over again, year after year, with our partners, with our allies, with our friends around the world, uh, gives us that basis, that bedrock of trust for any eventuality that may come down the road. In November, you are scheduled to make an international trip to visit, among other places, Vietnam. How do visits such as this further the Navy's maritime security goals and enhance our partnerships with our international allies? Well, if you look at, our, at the national security strategy that we have, it's a maritime strategy. It, uh, it's very dependent on the Navy and Marine Corps and, and continuing to have a great Navy and Marine Corps to do it. And part of that strategy, there, there are three legs to that strategy. One is to concentrate on the Western Pacific. Second, uh, focus on the Arabian Gulf. But third is to focus on building these partnerships with places like Vietnam that we can, again, work together, we can come from the sea, we can train, we can do either bilateral or multilateral things together with, with either one country or a group of countries so that we are more interoperable, so that if a disaster strikes, if you need to give some humanitarian assistance somewhere, that we can do it together, that we can increase our reach um, instead of one country trying to do it all, which in today's world is, is pretty impossible. We have these partnerships. We have trained together, we have worked together, so if something happens, uh, we can do things together and, do, and know how each other reacts. China will play a role in next July's Rim of the Pacific exercise. Can you talk about our developing partnership with China uh, and what challenges and opportunities it presents uh, given the national defense strategy's call for a rebalance to the Pacific? Well, exactly what you, what you said, this rebalance to the Pacific, the focus on particularly the Western Pacific, uh, is going to cause our interaction with China to increase. And what we want to see is more interaction. What we want to see is um, more work together, is understanding how each other operates, more transparency uh, as to what, uh, what they are doing, what we are doing. We invited the Chinese to RIMPAC um, in order to further these goals in order to make sure that as we focus on the Western Pacific, and we've never left the Western Pacific, we've been there for decades, but as we focus on it, that our interactions with, with China and with other nations in the, in the region, that we, that we are on the same page in terms of how we operate together, in terms of what expectations there are, in terms of making sure that the sea lanes remain open, making sure that the global commons are protected.